Okay, so back in the spring of 2006, I took a trip down to Florida with uh, Rachel. For those of you who heard my other story, she was my best friend at the time. And, um, you know, stayed with my grandma, like I said. And on the way back from one of these trips, I randomly decided, for no reason at all, to go to Atlanta. And if you're coming from Miami, you know Atlanta's like fucking four hours out of the way. It's way up in like the northwest corner of Georgia. And it was totally pointless because we ended up staying there for one night and we didn't even see anything in Atlanta. The only thing we saw was the most ghetto-ass neighborhood in the city because this is where our hotel was. We were staying in this place called the Stratford uh, Hotel. And this is a nice hotel in the middle of Atlanta's Worst ghetto. In fact, it was the it was so bad, it was the only time in my life I've ever seen like an armed security guard at a hotel in the U.S. Every single hotel in Israel is armed security at the front door, but you don't see that in the U.S. But we walk into the lobby, and there's this big, tall, scary black guy. He's like six four, six five. I know I love scary black guys, right? I'm always talking about them. But I guess it's just a theme in my life. And uh, he was like middle-aged, maybe 40, 50. And he's standing behind the reception desk in the lobby. And I figure, you know, the, um, what do you call it? The reception guy, the clerk is going to come and check us in. So like, um, excuse me, um, who's checking us in? And he kind of glares at us. And goes, I'm checking y'all in. We're just like, holy shit, where the fuck are we? And uh, yeah, that neighborhood was terrible. Like, we stopped at a gas station. And within like 30 seconds, there's like three fucking crackheads trying to get money out of us. Trying to hit on Rachel. Like, yeah, yeah, yo, yo, man, yo, your girl is good, man. I'm gonna get him. I'm like, yo. You got like two seconds to get the fuck away from us before I kill you. Go away. Jesus, man. Like, (laughs) that's your only impression of Atlanta. You probably don't want to go back. But we're in the hotel, and we got some drugs on us, right? (laughs) You should have seen that coming. And we had weed. We had a couple, some pills. And we're trying to decide, like, should we save some for the road? Or should we do it all tonight? Ultimately, we decide to do it all right there. Have one big party that night. We could always pick up when we got back to Long Island. So, um, we hit the road the next day, and I'm driving through uh, South Carolina, right by the border with North Carolina. And you know, for those of you who don't know, if you're driving north through the southern U.S. with like New York license plates... You were pretty much guaranteed to get pulled over for no fucking reason. Like these cops down there, they have nothing better to do but pull your ass over. Like, it's a Yankee, boy. We gotta get him. Get us a Yankee. Yeehaw! And, (laughs) yeah, if you're driving south, no one will bother you. Because what drug trafficker drives south? But if you're driving north, forget it. You're a moving target. And I talked about how fast I used to drive. And I'm flying down uh, Interstate 85. And all of a sudden, I pass a cop. I'm South Carolina State Trooper. I say, fuck! Ah, no. And immediately, this guy starts following me. And then he turns his lights and sirens on to pull me over. Ah, shit. God damn it. Only thing I need. Last thing I need. And I can't pull over right away, so I got to drive for like a half a mile. But I was slow. I used my uh, turn signal. I pull off onto this the grass, this off ramp. And I guess it pissed them off even more that I kept driving. So these cops proceed to toss my car for literally the next half hour. You know, like they looked everywhere, right? I never had my car searched like that before. And while they're doing this, the cop looks at me and goes, You know how fast you were going, boy? 
and, and I'm thinking, oh no, oh god, he's doing 95 miles an hour, I said, um, uh, no officer, you were doing 73, I said, I'm thinking, what, 73, he's fucking going 95, how'd that happen, then I realized there was a car directly alongside of me as I passed this cop, and the fucking radar gun got caught the other guy and not me. The car I passed was doing 73, but they didn't know that. Like, you were doing 73 in a 65. Why are you going so fast? It's like, um, I don't know. And then, in the middle of their uh, search of my car, they find Rachel's BB gun that she liked to carry on her. And then I'm thinking, oh no, she's going to fucking jail. Because New York is just Nazi with their gun laws, right? You have even a BB gun on you in New York State. You can get arrested for possession of a concealed weapon. But I, I didn't know that in the South, <coughs> they don't give a shit, right? It's a different world. And uh cop holds up the BB gun and goes, What are you doing with this, miss? And Rachel's just like, preparing for the cuffs to come out. Um, I, I don't know, officer, I was just... This ain't even a real gun, ma'am. You know, down here, we carry real guns, not them these little things like this. And we're just like, what? <laughs> and, uh, wow, this cop didn't give a shit. So, after they finished tossing the car, he just hands her back the BB gun and goes, Yeah, here you go, miss. You can have your little... BB gun, and uh, then they let us go and we take off, but uh, yeah, like I said, different world, it's amazing how many different worlds you could have in the same country, but uh, yeah, there was some crazy shit, crazy shit.